So as a database administrator, why do you need to worry about network configurations? I mean, it's just about databases, right? So connecting to SQL Server uses DNS, IP addresses, port numbers. It uses the network, and you will run into questions and answers as a DBA on connectivity and um, troubleshooting those connections understanding the network settings and where to find them how to change them and what to tell your clients is critical to the job let's take a look at the connection string that your users developers are going to be asking you for so they can use management studio or uh, put it in their web config or a vendor application they're going to need that server instance name and possibly the port number now this is the format Normally what you put in the management studio is something like this, the server name slash and a single instance. That's usually nine times out of ten what you're going to be handing to someone requesting access to your SQL server. There's other ways to make this connection because every instance has a port number and that includes the default instance which you may remember is on port 1433 by default. Well, any other instance that you install, named instance, is going to have a port number. That way, whenever the connections come in, it knows what port to use to separate it from the other SQL instances. So as an example, the syntax for Management Studio, you can actually include the port number on the end. And that will work. But in reality, it's, actually, it's not even necessary. You can use this format. X is a number, by the way. And you don't need the name instance because you're already identifying the port number to go to. So it doesn't need to resolve the name of the SQL instance. So you can always take it one step further, which is probably what you're thinking right now. You can do the IP address and the port number, and that connection will still work. Now, of course, you're not going to hand this to uh, a developer or, or someone who want, wants to put this in the management studio it doesn't make a whole lot of sense the purpose of server names DNS the purpose of the instance names is to have some kind of logical separation uh, maybe it's application specific it could be an environment a test production uh, QA something like that so the naming conventions are necessary as part of the logic of your infrastructure I have a few instances on my machine so just to demonstrate what we just did and then we're going to take a look at where these settings are VM desktop is the name of my machine I have a default um, SQL instance so I can just put the name of the machine here and I can connect to it so giving a client the name of this server or VM and they will go to the default SQL instance right taking it to the next instance we have an 01, 02, 03, they all have separate port numbers. So just to demonstrate this, let's now take a look at the, the settings for the SQL instances on this VM. So you may have a SQL Server Configuration Manager in your start menu. I do not, and it might be because maybe my installation just didn't include it. But if you don't have this application under your start menu, and it would normally be somewhere, let's see, where is this SQL Server? Uh, somewhere in here. So instead, we can go into the computer management, and on the tree, you just drill down to services and applications, and it's the exact same thing. So if we take a look at WSSQL01, here's our services on this VM. this is the default instance the one that sits on 1433 and then these are all named instances and they can't be on 1433 they have a dynamically assigned port number now I assigned a static port number to the number one in one of the other video our other videos so we'll take a look at the default instance one and two and see what the difference is if we highlight WSSQL01 and go to TCP IP 
you're going to want to scroll all the way down under the IP address tab all the way down to the bottom and you'll see there's a TCP dynamic port and a TCP port so normally when I first installed this when I first installed this this number actually looked like this the 51672 that was a dynamic port during the service start the first time it chooses a port number that's not taken it assigns it in the dynamic ports because if you reboot the ser if you restart the server the VM or restart the service it's looking to see if that port is still available if it's not available it has to assign a new port so that's why it's dynamic now normally in a production environment you're not gonna have dynamic ports you're gonna take that number and you're gonna assign it to the TC port below which makes it a static assignment now that's the only port that this service will use after you click apply and restart the service of course now this I did already so we click OK if we go to WSSQL02 this one I did not change and it's already on 51673 so if you wanted to change the ports for all of the instances you needed you're working with you could do it in here in the TCP IP settings for each instance one at a time the IP address that it's using is the is the one assigned to the server you could assign a different IP assuming the server has more than one, one IP address you'll see these loopback address the 169 address you see quite a few IPs in here so you could assign a static IP as well as a static port for each instance if you wanted to normally that's not necessary because that's what the ports for uh, you use the same static IP address or in the case of your client you give them the server name and the port number specifies the instance take a look at the default this was not a named instance and you see it has a statically assigned port 1433 which is the default for Microsoft's default instance so let's see just to demonstrate this we're gonna go let's grab this port number and I can use that here get rid of the instance name just put a comma and the port number for the 01 instance and I'm able to connect and I know that's 01 because it's the only one that has AdventureWorks I can also use the loopback address the loopback IP address the IP address for the machine any of those will work as long as that port is correct then it's gonna uh, be pointing to the right instance the IP addresses and the port numbers is the most you're really going to need to worry about. I haven't worked with anyone that needed to use named pipes and shared memory. I'm sure you've seen that in the configuration here, named pipes and shared memory. Uh, my understanding after looking these up is shared memory is exactly what it sounds like. It's a shared memory of the local machine. It doesn't use the network. And named pipes is similar. The difference is name pipes you can connect to another machine using name pipes as well. But if you do that, you have to have TCP IP enabled in order for it to get there, which kind of defeats the point. The name pipes is used the same way as shared memory. It does not use any network aspect of the machine. It's just the just the pro, no, just the protocol. It's just the protocol so it takes that network aspect out of it and just connects directly from from one service to the to the other is what you can probably think of it so that's the basics of the SQL server networking uh, there's more when you start getting into clustering and in that scenario you'll have a virtual IP you'll have a virtual name and it gets a little more complicated so if I get a demonstration set up I'll probably do a video on clustering as well please leave your comments below 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.